Greetings and welcome everyone. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Apologies, I know I have been scarce. I know I haven't been uploading, but yeah, we're back. Um, please do forgive me, there has been a lot going on and um, that took uh, most of my time, uh, but that is not an excuse. I know, guys, you expect a lot from me, and thank you so much for your patience. Um, if you are new to this channel, please uh, subscribe. If you are a returning subscriber or a returning viewer, um, welcome back. Thank you so much. This channel is growing all because of you. So today we are back with the grade 12 content, and and we will be discussing land as an agricultural production factor. So there are about four production factors that we're going to discuss, uh, but we're going to start with land as a um, production factor. So let's let's get to it. Again, if you're new to this channel, please press that subscribe button. And again, if you are a returning subscriber, guys i appreciate you a lot thank you so much so yeah let's get to it now before we discuss anything any other subtopics let's look at land what are we talking about when we are talking about land so um basically when we are talking about land we are talking about um the part of the earth's surface that is not covered by water as opposed to the sea or even the air Right now, land is important because of its natural resources that are available to the farmer. Now, these natural resources include climate, they include soil, they include topography, they include water, they include uh, vegetation. Right, and now in agriculture, the focus is on soil. Now, when we are talking about soil, we are talking about the upper layer of earth in which plants grow. Now, this can be a black or a dark brown material, typically consisting of a mixture of organic remains, clay, or even rock particles. Now, let's get to the functions of the land. Now, land provides space for economic activities, right? So, basically, what we need to note is that land is a source of wealth for individuals, groups, or even communities. And it provides physical space for industry, for recreation, or even transport. Now, what do we mean when we say that it provides a space for economic activities? So, um, as I have mentioned, that it is a source of wealth. So it provides a platform for various production processes and economic farming activities to take place. Now, with, with crops, for example, soil is the medium in which crops grow. However, even if you're not going to use soil, but you're going to use another other growing mediums, you'll definitely need land to put those structures. Looking at hydroponics, for example, you definitely, even if you are planting, <coughs> you are growing your crops using uh, a hydroponic system, but you're going to need a space so that you can put up the structure. Right. Another thing, um, land provides food, either for plants, for animals, or even um, human beings. So now what about plants? We're saying it provides food for plants. Now, how does that happen? Now, the crops will obtain most of the nutrients, water, or even air that they need from the soil. Right. Now, this resource is found on land. Then the soil also provides suitable temperature and enough air for the supply of food, right? Now, with livestock or animals, they also obtain food from the soil in the form of pastures, right? Then the food that we eat now as human beings comes from the soil. Now, this type of food, um, either vegetables, fruits, or even herbs, also, even the livestock that will be fed from the grass or the pastures, at the end of the day, some of the human beings consume um, 
those animals, right? Um, land also provides raw materials. Now, raw materials are resources that are used to produce or manufacture other products. Um, land also provides minerals. Now, these different minerals serve different purposes and they can be uh, classified into different categories. Now, they can be classified as minerals of monetary value, such as diamonds, such as silver, such as gold. They can also be classified as minerals that are used as raw materials in industries such as coal, copper, iron, and platinum. They can also be classified as minerals that are used as nutrients by plants and animals such as zinc, phosphorus, and calcium, right? Now, let's look at um, the economic characteristics of land as a production factor. Now, one of the things that we need to note is that land is a scarce resource. Land is limited. Hence, it is not increasing, right? So land has different features now, right? There are different characteristics of land that we need to take note, right? Um, one, uh, land is durable. Right. So the development processes in the soil ensure that the land is able to renew itself. Now, this makes it a useful and a viable commodity. Um, soils have characteristics such as texture, um, structural types and the environment in which they are found. Right. Now, this means that they have different production potentials. Now, only 25% of it is covered by land and only half of this land can be plowed. Now, only a small percentage of soil can be used for agricultural production. So the availability of agricultural land is limited, right? Now, the nature of soil restricts um, agricultural activities. So crops often grow in certain types of soil, right? Um, soil is found in a specific environment. And also the soil is subject to the law of diminishing, um, diminishing returns. Now, what are we talking about when we're talking about the law of diminish, diminishing returns. Now, this is basically an economic term that explains what happens in the soil if you continue to add more of one factor to a productive process while keeping other factors constant. So you might reach a stage where inputs are no longer uh, providing necessary outputs. So soil has a maximum yield, where after its yield now, it will start to decrease. Now, for instance, when you add more fertilizer to the soil, you expect the yield to continue to increase with the amount of fertilizer to you add, right? However, when the yield is no longer increasing, even if you add more fertilizer, we say now the soil has reached a stage of the law of diminishing returns or it declines rather, right? Then the last one, the last important um, economic characteristic, um, the physical condition of soil cannot be changed. Now, the soil inherits its characteristics from mother rock from which it is broken down. Now, you will remember this from grade 10, grade 11, where you are discussing um, weathering of rocks, right? Where basically the soil comes, because we are saying soil comes from the rocks. So the rocks break down, right? 
And now, what does this mean? When we are saying it inherits um, its characteristics, then now what does it mean? It means that the texture cannot be changed. It cannot be changed anyhow, right? Big fun. Then coming to the techniques or met methods of increasing land productivity. Now, land productivity needs to be increased because um, the world needs to provide or to produce food to feed the growing populations of countries, right? Now, there are various methods that we can employ in order to increase the productivity of land. Now, we need to, to adapt new ideas. Um, we, we need to adapt to new technologies. Those are things that can increase the productivity of land, taking care of the, uh, of the land, agricultural land in a suitable manner, for example. Now, let's get to it. Um, one, we need to adapt uh, production to scientific methods, right? Now, this means that we need to employ scientific methods or scientific ideas that ensure that there will be maximum suitable production, right? Um, even with irrigation methods, new methods or scientific way, ways that are more effective than traditional methods. Also, um, consolidating um, uneconomical farm units. Now, this will reduce the management and running costs because uh, separate farm units are more expensive to manage than when we combine them, right, into smaller units. And then the use of technology, right? Technology can be used to complete tasks in less time and with lower production costs. The next one, crops that are watered by irrigation systems show higher production levels than crops that obtain water naturally from, their, from, from the water table, right? So the quality of irrigated crops is also better. So we need pro to provide water through irrigation. Then we also have another, another method is to choose the farming type that suits the nature of the soil. So a poor choice of farming, um, one that does not suit the soil conditions will then result in a total failure of the farming enterprise so you need to choose the suitable type of soil for whatever commodity that you will be um, doing right then we need to gather enough information on the land to be used so we need to carry out soil analysis we need to to do situational analysis right and also diversify land now, one of the important things is that different soil types will suit different forms of production. So the farm should be divided into units according to the soil types and different forms of farming practiced on each of these units, right? This is called diversification and it can ensure a continuous source of in income to the farmer. We also need to modify land. Now, how does this happen? Now, a farmland has to, that has proved to be uneconomical, could be modified. For example, the land could be excavated and the farm infrastructure could be built on it, right? Then the last thing, we can also improve the physical condition and productivity of the soil right now um, the problems with soil texture and slope can actually be solved in in many ways um, for example if we're looking at um, soil texture problems what we can do to make sure that we improve the conditions is to add organic matter to improve drainage to avoid over cultivation 
um, and also to improve the pH value of the soil. Then in terms of slope, um, we can deal with this by um, contour plowing, uh, by contour banks, by stone banks, and also by terraces. So you will remember this from grade 10 again. Then um, coming to the ownership of land, right? Um, now, land is, as we have mentioned, that it is an important issue. Like, land is important. And in South Africa, land ownership has is a, re a really serious issue that we have been debating for quite some time now. And without land, basically, there is no farming, right? So there are various types of land ownership, um, basically two or even three. So there is actually um, land um, private ownership or private tenure, uh, state ownership, and then communal um, tenure. So when we're looking at private land, the private owned land, this is where basically a farmer has full ownership on the piece of land which they have bought and their name, they appear on the title deed, right? So, now, when we're talking about the title deed, we're talking about a legal documentation or a legal document that say um, who is the owner of this particular land, right? It's just a small piece of paper, right? It's a, it's a document, a legal document that, that tells us who is the owner of this land, right? Um, and then this, this title deed must be registered with the deeds registry, right? Then we've got state land, the land that is owned by the government. Then we've got a communal land, um, when and now this, this type of land is owned by the community. So it's under, um, the traditional leaders authority right so it's owned by this particular community or a group of access or of people who have access to this particular land so in most cases um land communal um land people who occupy communal land they don't have title deeds but they will have what we call um, a permission to occupy, right? So in most cases, the in most cases, the traditional leaders will then give access to certain individuals to occupy land, whether for farming activities or even just um, for, for, for households to build their houses and occupy the space, right? Then um, in, in 1994, the South African government launched a new land reform program, right? Which has three components, right? Now these are land restitution, land redistribution, and tenor reform but before we get to that let's discuss what is land reform what are we talking about when we're talking about land reform so this is basically a form of agrarian reform involving changing of laws the regulation uh, regulations and customs regarding land ownership so it may consist of a government initiated or government backed uh, property uh, redistribution generally for agricultural um, purposes right so coming to this three these three different components right um, what are we talking about when we're talking about um, land restitution so basically um, this is the return of land or provision of compensation to those who had their land taken away from them in the past. Then with distribution, redistribution, um, land redistribution means to address previously discriminatory apartheid policies and to ensure that poor 
or even previously disadvantaged people have access to land, mainly for agricultural or residential purposes. Then we've got the third component, which is the tenure reform to improve the security of tenure people occupying rural or semi-urban land. So those were the three components that were launched, right, in 1994. Then we've got various legislation now um, that back up the land reform, right? Um, for instance, we've got Communal Land Rights Act of 2004, which allows communities to take ownership of communal land on which they have been living. Then we have um, the upgrading of Land Tenor X rights of 1996, which allows uh, people with uh, permission to occupy or leases on a state land to upgrade their level of ownership to a freehold title. Then we've got extension of tenure Security Tenure Act of 1997, which gives farm workers rights to, to the land on which they have been residing in. Then we've got the Land Reform Act of 1996, which allows transfer of land to labor tenants. Now, then we've got, um, okay, I think for now, then we've got, um, for example, natural resource legislation as well which may include the National Water Act. Now, this require uh, permission to establish timber plantation or to irrigate crops. And we've got National Felt and Forest Fire Act of 1998, which addresses fire safety issues. We've got the Conservation of Agricultural Resources Act of 1983, and we have the suitable utilization of agricultural resources bill of 2003 which calls for the preservation of natural resources then another important thing that i didn't um, touch on is um, forms of land degradation so you will remember this in grade 10 you have done this in grade 10 we've got soil degradation then we have got We've got vegetation degradation. Now, coming to the soil de degradation, um, we're talking about erosion, um, salination, acidification, water logging, loss of fertility. So those are factors that contribute to soil degradation. And then with vegetation degradation, um, the loss of vegetation cover, the bush enrochment, alien plant invasion, changes of composition of plant species, deforestation, clearing of felt. Those factors contribute to vegetation degradation. Then we've got water degradation. Now, water pollution as a result of fertilizers and agricultural chemical contribute to water degradation. Now, that's it for the session. Now it's question time, question time. So let's actually look at these questions. So we're going to have few questions. So make sure, I hope you were writing uh, or even recording this session. But anyway, you can always come back to it um, anytime, watch it as many times as you can. Um, let's look at the questions now, starting from question one. So you always know that with your exams or even tests, you always start with the multiple choice, right? So now we're going to look at questions that are related to land as a production factor, agricultural production factor. So various possible answers are provided for the following questions. So you're only going to write the correct letter. So either A or B or C or D next to the question number. So please be honest to yourself. We're going to do this together. I'm going to assist with the, with the, with the answers. But make sure you, you don't wait for me to give you the answer. Try to answer first because you are testing yourself. You are helping yourself here. 
So I'm helping you to help yourself, right? So the factor that is not a production factor. So we've got A, labor. We've got B, vegetation. We've got C, management. We've got D, land, right? So obviously, we're, we're discussing land today as a production factor. So D is out. Then now if we look at other production factors, we've got um, capital, for example, as a production factor. We've got um, management as a production factor, then we've got land. So what does this mean? It means that the factor that is not a production factor in this case is B, which is vegetation. So B is the correct letter B. In which of the following is not an economic characteristic of the land, right? So we have destructibility. We've got subject to the law of diminishing returns, availability, and durability. So we have discussed all these economic characteristics. Now, take your time, think about it, which one is the correct one. So the correct answer there is A, destructibility. All right. A primary natural resource utilized in agricultural production is A, labor, B, soil, C, capital, D, diesel fuel. Again, a primary natural resource utilized in agricultural production is the correct letter there is B, it's soil. The primary natural resource that is utilized in agricultural production is soil, right? The economic characteristics of agricultural land that makes it a good long-term investment is its A, um, location, B, management, C, durability, and then D, risks. So now this takes us back to the economic characteristics. So what makes it a good investment, long-term investment? It's its durability. So C is the correct letter D. Then the primary la um, natural resource is A, laborers, B, soil, C, capital, D, tree. So in this case, the primary natural resource is soil. So B is the correct letter. Now, let's come to the second question, question two, where we're supposed to give one word for each of the following descriptions. So you're only going to write the correct term, right? Or say the correct term if you are just saying it, right? So the law, or the law that explains the addition of successive units of one production factor does not result in a proportional increase in yields. What is that law? Da, 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 da. Gonna count into three, then you say it. One, two, three. Let's say it together, this is the law of diminishing returns, right? The production factor on a crop farm that could be described as a durable, as durable and indestructible. This one is obvious. It's basically land or soil, right? An area of ground used for farming and agricultural production. What is that area? What is that area? That area is called land, right? Then let's come to the long questions now, right? So 
Question 3.1, name four functions of land. So I'm going to give you a few moments now to just think about them briefly before we can actually discuss them. So name four functions of land. So the functions of land, one, we have discussed this. Um, land supplies space. Land supplies raw materials. Land supplies food for plants, animals, and human beings. And also land provides for, provides minerals, right? They named three methods of increasing no, 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 at least four economic characteristics of land. So we have discussed this. I'm not going to give you answers on this one. Um, name three methods of increasing the productivity of land. Again, I have talked about this. So now take your time. Also, to, to answer these questions, make sure you pause this part. Pause this section and so that you can read the questions properly and then you give um, you give answers you give answers so make sure you test yourself and then if you need to go back to question one pause there answer the questions go to question two pause answer the questions question three pause even with the next session we're gonna do the same i'll have questions at the end so make sure you listen until the end otherwise that's it for this session thank you so much for joining me the next um lesson for agri um, grade 12 will be labor as um an agricultural production factor. Again, if you are new to this channel, um, please subscribe. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please continue supporting me. Make sure that the channel is growing. Um, I'm definitely going to think of other ways that I can um, make this platform exciting. Um, yes, there are other plans that I have, but... Um, we are growing, hey, slowly but surely, but we are getting there and I appreciate your support. Please feel free to suggest um, other ways of growing the channel. Feel free to ask questions um, if you are happy with the, with the questions at the end of the lessons. Uh, please um do brief me if you want a separate session where we just discuss questions then also please advise otherwise that's it for me thank you so much guys much love